Good morning, everybody, and welcome to this week's webinar. Today, we are going to be talking about knowledge management with Lucy, Knowledgetown, and Starmind. So thank you so much for being here. Um, we do have a few things to just go over before we get started. Um, as usual, we do have a few different chats going on here. So make sure to put any regular conversational chat in the, the one over here. Um, and then any questions will go in the Q&A tab. We do have the upvote capability. So if you see somebody drop a question that you also want answered, make sure to click that up arrow and we will try to get to those in consecutive order at the end for a live Q&A. Um, but without further ado, very excited to, to hear what you all have to say today. And um, thanks so much for being here to present. Excellent. Uh, well, uh, welcome everybody. Uh, thank you for joining us today. Uh, really excited about uh, this topic, which is um, the theme is, you know, proving the value of the modern knowledge management system. And, you know, one of the things I think about is just how intrinsically we know, um, well, this is a good idea, but we got to get beyond that. And so today I'm joined um, by my colleagues, Laura Baker uh, from Knowledge Hound and Mark Montebell from uh, Starmine and looking forward to their perspectives on, uh, on this as well. Uh, so I'm Scott Littman. I'm the co-founder of uh, Lucy. Uh, I've had a um, a career uh, uh, in entrepreneurship in marketing services and ad tech. Uh, and I'm really, uh, and over that time, I've worked with uh, over 20% of the Fortune 500 on you know, what is next? What's the new thing? Uh, and I spent a lot of time helping businesses with the justification of you know why new technology, uh, why this technology, and so you know one of the challenges for every business is prioritization of these new efforts. There's no lack of good ideas, and there's no lack of um, you know what you know we want to do this, but there is scarcity of budget dollars, and there's also scarcity of people resources. So you know if knowledge management is one of five good ideas how do we put together the business case and the justification for it is the idea that should be worked on or invested in? Or by the way, sometimes as you go through these exercises, you realize maybe it, it shouldn't be number one. Um, maybe there's other things that you know, meet a better criteria. And so our discussion today is really gonna be around um, what are our key learnings, uh, both those at Lucy and at Knowledge Hound and Starmine uh, for how do you put together that business case? And, you know, when we think about it, there are some clear benefits to knowledge management. Uh, you know, one of the, and some common themes that I think go across all of our platforms are, you know, how do we help people save time? How do we help individuals get more done in less time and spend less time on the minutia of trying to figure out where the answer is or how to get to the answer? Um, but to have the data that's needed so people could spend more time on writing the better proposal, writing the better brief, writing the better strategy deck, putting together uh, greater insights, making better uh, decisions because they have access to the right uh, data. So there are some common benefits that we see across all of this, and we'll hit on some of these as we go uh, through the session today. Um, but one of the things um, that even is like, you know, why have we brought, you know, Lucy, Starmind, and Knowledge Hound uh, together here? Um, you know, we all play in different parts of knowledge. And one of the things that's important is to define what is knowledge. Um, when we created Lucy uh, about six years ago, you know, we thought the knowledge we want to unlock is in the files that are owned inside of a business. You know, we think about the companies we work with. They have um, millions of pages of content that is the first party data. It's the stuff that is not available outside of their company. It's not on Google or anything like that. It is in SharePoint, it's in Box, it's in you know, Google Drive, it's in Teams, it's in uh, Office 365. And you know, people say, I can't, you know, I can't find uh, anything on SharePoint. You know, they don't, sometimes people don't even try. And we thought that's where knowledge lives. But as we started to work with more and more companies, we started to realize knowledge is way beyond that. Knowledge is, that is an element of knowledge. But another element is all the great third-party research that comes from the Mintels and Euromonitors and Cantars and eMarketers. Uh, and folks like that. And then we started to work with customers that had um, uh, respondent level marketing data, survey data, and they were working with platforms like KnowledgeHound. And we started to partner with KnowledgeHound because we realized that is an element of important knowledge 
And it is, depending on the user, it is just as important or more important than anything else. And then we had customers that started saying, well, knowledge is also between the ears of the experts. Who are the right people? And so then we collaborate with companies like StarMind because that's also part of that knowledge system and knowledge framework. Sometimes the answer is in a document. Sometimes it's Bob down the hall who's the expert uh, in the company or Bob um, that is overseas. And I didn't even know he existed. And so all these things come together uh, to represent knowledge. So I'm going to turn this over uh, to Laura and uh, we'd we'll love to hear uh, the knowledge I'm taking all of this. Thanks, Scott. Um, appreciate the intro. Happy Thursday, everybody. Uh, we've been working with Lucy for a while, and Scott had um, some great conversations with our with our founder, Christy Zolke, um, who t passed the torch to me last August um, to become CEO of Knowledge Hound. And I have about 20 years of experience in market research, um, having previously been at Mintel before Knowledge Hound. And so I was able to really understand this full ecosystem of where we're at and also see the modernization that Scott and team are bringing to life. And I love that Knowledge Hound is a component of that. And I'm going to tell you why. I'm going to try to tell you why, I should say. Um, so who is Knowledge Hound? <clears throat> Ultimately, like Scott just said, knowledge exists in so many different places. Um, and it's not one is not more important than the other um, at any given time. But what typically gets lost in a true flatline knowledge management ecosystem is the primary data that you have, that actual really expensive foundational studies that you're doing that allows you to really get at the heart of what consumers are saying. And there's so much raw data there. So the only way to bring your primary research data into this knowledge management system and give you a true holistic insights so that you don't just have those final reports, those banner books, that syndicated data, but you can also surface your raw data underneath is with Knowledge Hound. So we exist to power that aspect of it. And Scott in the future, I think is gonna show you a quick demo of how that works. But um, in order to bring this, this piece of it to life, this real survey aspect of it to life, let me just go into a few more details. So where does Knowledge Hound sit in the market? If you look at where does our technology, why do we, why did we build this technology? Well, most of our clients, and we work with Fortune 500 clients um, across the globe, they are working with multiple partners. We all know that everybody has their sweet spot, and rarely do you work with one particular survey provider. In fact, you probably work with tens, if not hundreds of them. And so where Knowledge Hound sits is we recognize that it's very difficult to unify and tell stories across those disparate providers. And so we act as like a survey data warehouse, if you will, that when you get this insight into the Knowledge Hound platform, you can unify, unify that data. It's very approachable. It's intuitive. And you can output it into new stories to tell that you're trying to uh, make critical decision, decisions from. And the, the problems we solve for are ones that everybody has. And it's the same problems that, um, that Scott at Lucy and, and Mark at Starmine are solving for. Christy, who I referenced, our founder, she built this product. Knowledge Hound is, in, is, a, is for insights professionals built by insights professionals. She was at P&G living this story. Many of you have heard this, um, the impetus for the idea of Knowledge Hound, but she was asked... Um, a question, how many men shave in the shower? And it took her ultimately four days to answer that question because she, despite being at P&G and specifically being on the Gillette brand, okay, having all the research in the world at her fingertips, she had to go back to various vendors in order to cut that data the right way to get to the men in the shower part of it. And so when she went back to give the answer, which incidentally was 20% at the time, um, she her boss told her, oh, that's great. You know, no harm, no foul. Thanks for giving me that answer. But we already moved forward the, with the innovation on the, on the razor we were talking to without that data point. And her aha moment was if insights can't move at the speed of the business, then insights becomes irrelevant. And here's what our clients tell us and what we're solving for is in fact that there's all this data inaccessible. There's you're mired and overwhelmed in trying to figure out how to leverage and find data and sift through data and cut data in different ways. So all your time is spent to Scott's earlier point on analyzing data and not actually surfacing and becoming thought leaders and truly servicing the business in the way that they're trying to do. Um, to bring it even more to life, 
This is an actual stat. It's much like if you're filming a movie and you have to get a final report, a final product out, a final movie out, all those scenes that end up on the editing floor because they just need to get down to the final two hour product or hell in Spider-Man's existence, like two, two, three hour product. But 75% of data typically does not make its way into a final report. You are answering a static question in time. You are fielding, um, research that's worked tens of thousands, sometimes hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of, um, of money. And you're answering specific questions, but it's cut in a way that just because it's not accessible in the future doesn't render it invaluable. And we liken this to, um, if you're a sports car fan, we liken this to buying a Lamborghini and buying it on a Saturday night. And on Sunday, you take it for a, a Sunday fun day and you're driving around and you're you're showing off your car and you are, if you're in Chicago, you're driving up and down Lakeshore Avenue. And rather than taking it back to the garage at the end of the day, you, and, and thinking, oh, tomorrow I'm going to do this with it. And Tuesday, I'm going to show it off to this person. You actually take it to the junkyard, throw away the keys. You're done with it. That's what we're doing with our data. That's what we're doing with our most expensive data. So enter knowledge out. Um, I love to bring bring stories and, and kind of what we do to life with some very specific use cases. And so you're going to see a couple of these before I turn this over to Mark. Um, VSP was one that actually really got it. They were one of our early adopters. And ultimately, they were able to take a study, um, just, just this one study, um, and use it 10 different times in order to pull out different nuggets in order to ask additional questions or customized questions that were not part of the original report. They ultimately would not have been able to do it if they had not had access to the power of that data that they had before. Another fun one, Danone, much like PNG, a very, very extensive research budget. Um, they were really relying on their PowerPoint decks and sharing those and trying to, to, to build stories. Um, and they, despite trying multiple different ways and having knowledge management systems, they were not able to access this raw data and they wanted to empower their teams to do so. They put their data into Knowledge Hound. They put those final reports, that raw data into Knowledge Hound. And they were able, in their words, to find one nugget that they literally said without Knowledge Hound, they wouldn't have been able to find. And that nugget of information, just that one little nugget that they found that otherwise they would have probably fielded a whole nother study for, enabled them to take it to an innovation team and specifically change the direction of innovation on one of their billion dollar brands. So it's not just about the time is money. It's also about not it's discovering what you can use and driving very strong ROI from that. So going back to 2020, a year that we I know we don't like to, to remember, but we um, had a stat that we like to use, which is 40 billion is spent on market research annually, 40 billion dollars, 40 billion dollars. And all these companies are doing zero waste initiatives. How do we get more from our dollars? Right. So the intent is there. But yet 52 percent of decisions are still not made on the quantitative information on the dollars that we're spending to get them. They're made on gut. They're made on um, old data. They're made on just what surfaced in the reports. And we're really here, the three of us and others are here to be parts of the puzzle that solve for this. Um, again, using a case study, Fandango is a client of ours that uses our Qualtrics inter integration. And ultimately they were trying to figure out how do I get this data into the hands of more people? This is a true democratization of data. So we want the right people to have the right data at the right time but it can be very difficult to use sometimes. And it, sometimes just based on the way that different um, systems work, you might not be able to give that data to people for contractual reasons or for um, training purposes or anything else. Well, when they employed Knowledge Hound as a piece of their ecosystem, they were able to get this data into the hands of ad sales teams, marketing, business intelligence in order to ensure that they could discover what they had already spent all this money on, but also they could use it and they could customize and cut this data in different ways in order to answer specific business decisions that are all tweaked a little bit, depending on what you're trying to answer. An R&D team is going to be answering something different from an ad team that's going to be answering something different than a, a brand manager. However, that data that they have can all be interpreted in different ways, depending on the lens in which they're looking through it. And that's what they were able to do. So then going to the, just the time is money aspect of it. 
34 hours, we heard this from our clients, 34 hours a month were spent analyzing, interpreting, reporting results, not actioning, not being those strategic thought leaders, not trying to bring new perspective to the game. It was all about the tactical elements. So we are out there in this labor market, finding the best of the best and bringing them on board. I look at my team now and, you know, we still struggle with this and in different areas. And it's how do you make these people that are the future of your business able to voice their opinions if you are continuing to spend their days just dealing in data? And so that's what technology is ultimately solving for. The content is so critically important, but you need, you need the right technology and the right ecosystem to surface it. And of course, another case study, Twitter was one that really um, came to mind when we were thinking about this piece. So Twitter has a very cool, a very comprehensive brand tracker. It was elusive to many. I'm going to use their term. They use the term elusive. They would need to answer a question from a brand tracker and they had the data, but they'd want to cut it the same way. Similar to that story with Christy and the 20% of men shaving in the shower, they would have to go back to the vendor in order to have them cut the data in different ways. Hey, we want to look at it X, Y, and Z. And then they would have to cross vendor studies in order to get the true perspective they were speaking to. When they deployed Knowledge Hound, specifically just to this one study, this one foundational study, they were able to take their time in answering a question from eight hours per question to three minutes. Okay, and that is what enables these teams that we're hiring to truly be powerful because then they're, they're using the data to better inform what they're trying to do not just find the data point and then not have time to do anything with it. And so these are the types of examples that really speak to why technology can be be so critical. It can be that overarching element that you need in order to maximize the dollars that you're spending in all the right areas. Again, just because it's not accessible doesn't render it invaluable. And that's where we come in specifically to the survey insights piece, survey insights space. I hope that brought that a little bit more to life. Um, I'm sure we'll have some additional questions, but at this point, I'm going to turn this over to Mark at StarMind and let him talk about how he completes the puzzle on the people side of things. Thank you very much, Laura. Very interesting insights. Uh, Hello, everyone uh, from Switzerland. So good evening from here. Good morning over there. Uh, Thank you very much for having me. Um, My name is Mark. Um, I'm the co-founder and CEO of StarMind, and I haven't spent all my life in in knowledge management. Uh, (laughs) In contrary, um, I actually, uh, my background is in computer science, and I specialized on AI. And that's actually also why StarMind now exists, because in my last years at the university, uh, we were working at the AI lab uh, of University of Zurich, working on humanoid robots. So a very complex field. And I, I, with my background in computer science, my co-founder with his background in biology, we believed back in the days we know everything about the world. We need to know to build an intelligent system. It took us two hours to actually uh, learn that we don't understand anything. I should have learned uh, everything from chemistry to physics to computer linguistics. Uh, Uh, you name it. Uh, And we said, instead of now learning all of that ourselves, why isn't there any platform where we can just ask questions and these questions find the right scientists anywhere in the world that are willing to answer our question? That was the original idea of Starman and how we started. And we quickly found out that every every large organization actually faces a very similar problem a lot of their knowledge is actually inside the heads of their people in in, in any form and shape, in form uh, of experience, expertise, uh, contextual knowledge, and so on. But for for, for the individual, it's not really possible to access that. So what StarMind in the end does, um, we actually learn who knows what about what, who deals with what kinds of topics more at the moment than anyone else so that uh, we can build a knowledge graph about your people, your employees, without anyone having to put any effort into curating that, uh, anyone having to uh, write down what they know, uh, capture what's inside their heads, but we instead use what's already there. And Scott showed a very nice overview about 
where uh, where where data actually uh, is within all those different systems and we specialize on on uh, on the one hand on conversational data so when people talk about topics be it on microsoft teams or slack uh, and so on and uh, mostly in public channels so uh, not really confidential data uh, and also on files, on uh, what people write write about, uh, be it on conference, SharePoint, in, in documents and so on. And we take all of that and put it into relation to each other to understand who at the moment in time is actually the go-to person if there is any question about the topic or a combination of topics uh, that you can't find in the documents uh, that Lucy uh, it brings up uh, brings up to uh, to to your uh, to your uh, to your desk. So uh, what Starmind in the end does, it allows employees to ask just any question, and instead of having to figure out who the uh, who actually has an answer, we do that. Our AI figures out the best route to the right person, someone who knows regardless where they sit, uh, regardless uh, of their hierarchical level and so on, uh, we can just make a prediction of who has knowledge at the moment in time. When we talk about how to uh, actually measure uh, how, how much uh, in the end uh, the, the benefit, the return on invest on such an investment is, we also have to look at how often such an, uh, an answer afterwards gets consumed again. Because what we have seen in many organizations, there are certain questions that just come up again and again and again and again. Uh, and if you are an expert and you uh, have to answer that question for the 50th time because it comes through an email or on, on uh, Teams or on Slack or whatsoever, that just consumes a lot of your time. So uh, the second part of what Starman actually does is once a question is answered, the AI takes over, and if someone asks a similar question, the AI can answer it uh, itself. So in a, in a recent study of IDC, um, we were able to prove that uh, we can reduce the time spent searching for an answer by 75%, which uh, we all know uh, can be quite a lot, especially in knowledge-intense uh, industries. And the title of today's... Uh, webinar is actually uh, modern knowledge management and we had a quick uh, discussion uh, be before the presentation what is actually the difference between modern uh, knowledge management and traditional knowledge management? and why do we all have to argue that being faster being able to to tap into the knowledge that is already there tap into the knowledge that is inside the heads of our colleagues why do we have to justify what the, the return on invest is and i believe that one of the reasons is that traditional uh, knowledge management systems actually focused much more on this very effort, of, of, on this big effort of capturing what's inside the heads, uh, uploading documents to, to somehow feed an algorithm, uh, doing a lot of things before you can actually uh, create the value. And modern knowledge management system in my opinion, they focus purely on the value generating interaction. So be it in the form of finding the right information out of all of those different tools uh, like Lucy does, or being able to directly access the, the knowledge that is inside the heads of, uh, of your peers. And AI these days can do all the cumbersome stuff and create the, 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 uh, the repository uh, that you need uh, to have to reuse it afterwards. And I think it's important to have that in mind. And, and we all are fighting against old myth uh, around a knowledge management system that didn't really work. And that's uh, something I believe we can change now by also introducing this term modern knowledge management. With that, over to you, Scott. Thank you very much. Uh, excellent. Thank you. So uh, I really appreciate getting Mark and uh, Laura's perspective, uh, and I'll um, take this from the Lucy uh, point of view. And so for those of you that haven't met Lucy before, uh, Lucy is, she is a modern knowledge management system. She's a, uh, an AI powered uh, cognitive companion to the research and insights professional. 
Uh, she's in place at many Fortune 1000s, as well as some very large agencies uh, that service the Fortune 1000. Uh, Lucy is in her third generation uh, with four patents and over 100,000 people hours of development. And she's working across sectors from packaged goods, retail, entertainment, financial services, healthcare, uh, tech, and more. Uh, what I was hoping to do is just briefly show everybody, what does this even look like? Like, how do these things work? And so let's just jump into Lucy for a moment. And I'm gonna show two or three just quick examples. Um, so this is Lucy, we're not gonna do the full tour or anything like that. But if I ask Lucy a question like, what do we know about mothers um, purchasing organic foods? Lucy uses natural language processing and natural language understanding. You just talk to her as you would to a colleague. And she goes through and looks at all of the different connected sources. In the case of this Lucy, I've got you know, 21 different sources connected from various SharePoints to you know, dashboards and Tableau to surveys and Knowledge Hound, uh, third-party research from eMarketer and Global Web Index and others. And it's Lucy's job to say, what is the best answer? She actually provides in the chat a little summary um, answer. Uh, and then we can look in and see how she found, you know, on page 19 of 31 from Global Web Index or on this infographic, uh, you know, that these are top answers and they're rated by Lucy's confidence. Well, one of the things that we, um, and, and by the way, this is just all a huge time saver. I mean, we get people that are searching across hundreds of SharePoints, millions of pages of content. They're looking for the needle in the haystack of the data they own. You know, I know it's here somewhere, but where? And what could be hours of searching uh, could, goes into minutes. And by the way, I think you'll see, I think both Laura and Mark talked about just that in, uh, increased efficiency um, that comes with the modern knowledge management system. So this is just being one example of that. But the other thing is um, we should integrate all of these things together. So if I ask Lucy a question like, uh, what are the most uh, um, popular genres of movies? Lucy's going to take that question. She's going to uh, she's going to recognize uh, the intent uh, um, that I'm looking for. She's going to search across all of the data. She might find something here from a third party on page 14 to 37. But her top answer, based on confidence, uh, is uh, Qualtrics data that is um, integrated to Knowledge Hound, and Knowledge Hound in this case being integrated to Lucy. Uh, in fact, Lucy, you know, her specialty is language. She's really good at understanding the intent of a question, understanding the spoken word. Um, she's not so great with numbers and graphs. And so what we do is the integration with Lucy and Knowledge Hound is really tight. And so um, Lucy isn't drawing this graph. Lucy isn't understanding these numbers. Knowledge Hound is. And we've embedded the full function of Knowledge Hound into the answer unit. So if I want to take this question of what are the most popular genres of movies and now filter it to, you know, 25 to 34, um, Lucy's not doing that work, Knowledge Hound is. And the other piece then is, um, is expertise. Yes, the first example, I found answers from documents. And the second one, there's a great answer that's coming both from documents, but also from respondent level marketing data. But to what Mark was showing in Starmine is oftentimes the right answer is from people. In fact, we interview companies, um, and I'll just get into that in a moment, how we develop personas for users. And in many companies, the leading search engine is to go to Teams or Slack and ask, does anybody know um, an answer to this? Because they've kind of given up on the idea that they can search SharePoint or Teams or their existing file systems and get to that answer on their own. And so one of the things we do is when people ask the question, and in this instance, um, when people ask a question of Lucy, and sometimes uh, they'll say, I didn't find what I was looking for. Um, maybe the right data isn't there uh, or hasn't been connected yet. And so we'll ask people when we're integrated to Starmind, we'll say, if you didn't find what you're looking for, tell us what you're looking for, and we'll, pop, we'll send the question out to the Starmind community. And what's really cool about that is that a, um, what wasn't a hit across, say, the document data can be a hit across the experts. And the expert will answer, and the person asking the question will get the answer back. 
And then beyond that, we'll actually take the question and answer, and we'll make that new content into Lucy uh, via Starmine so that, um, that if people ask similar questions, they will get the answers from the experts that were um, answered previously, which is pretty cool. Uh, Natalie, I'm going to go back to the uh, uh, deck, if you can take me there. There we go. And so just want everybody to get kind of a quick peek at, you know, when we think about the modern, you know, think about the modern knowledge management system, what does it look like? And how do these things like StarMind and Knowledge Hound and Lucy all play together uh, as part of one knowledge system? So to get to our point of view on how do you drive the, the business justification, uh, for us, we start with doing persona models. In fact, um, Part of our process is before uh, we typically provide pricing and quotes, and certainly before somebody becomes a customer, we will have mapped out the persona model of the audience we're going to work with. And it's incredibly helpful because we'll get into um, what part of the business are we in? What is the role of the people? And maybe junior roles versus senior, maybe global roles versus specific brand roles are going to be different. But uh, and we may end up with multiple personas, but for any given notable audience, we want to get into the DNA of the user and say, help us understand what a day in a life looks like. How do you work with data today? Um, what are the pain points? What are the things that are having people either, you know, work late into the night, what's costing time on weekends, or where do we just simply run out of time? There isn't enough time to get everything done. You know, what are the inhibitors? What are the barriers? And we map those out. And then we look at and say, what is, where does the data live? You know, where are the dependencies of the data? And we do this to build a persona model. And then the most important piece really is bottom right, which is what are the goals? Um, what is going to drive ROI around this? So as a for uh, instance, we oftentimes realize there are certain common pain points. We see that um, people will, you know, tell us all of these, which is, um, I don't have enough time uh, to get it all done, or we are too dependent on the subject matter experts, or our goal is to get rid of the minutia, the hours of looking. And I think Laura had a great example of it in hers, where what, what is the value of spending hours looking? I want to get to the answer so I can figure out from that answer, what am I going to do so I can make a better decision, uh, so I can drive better strategy uh, and, and other related work. And so we find that there are some kind of potential areas of cost savings. One of probably the biggest is just that savings of time. And so, for example, we went through one of these persona models um, with a prospect, and it was an organization with 1,500 employees. And you know, we've done surveys of organizations, and we have found examples where people are spending four hours, five hours, 10 hours per week looking for information. In this, comp in this example, and they averaged out between some of the people that are um, low on the search level to those that are just immersed in it, and they did surveying, and they came up with, out of our persona session, they came up with that an average of um, two plus hours every week uh, were spent across 1,500 employees, so, so 3,000 hours per week, and you take that over the year, and it ends up being millions. And so when we think about um, how are we going to justify these things? How do we look at that pile of good ideas where there are finite uh, resources and budget and people, and we can only deploy so many good ideas into the business? How do we articulate that? We get into that persona model. We recognize the pain points, and we start to figure out how do we articulate those in dollar terms? Because if we're spending millions on the inefficiencies of people looking through systems, um, in this case, just the amount of time in search, how do we bring that back to dollars? Because a lot of those other ideas on the desk don't have mapped out dollars or not as many dollars. And this can drive um, that sort of prioritization or justification. And so, you know, one example is the save time. Uh, another is redundant research, which is really big. Um, we get, <clears throat> um, uh, you know, you think about like the giant package goods companies we work with, retailers, uh, any of these groups where they're conducting research. And if there are hundreds or thousands of people that are across research and insights, but as well as the broader marketing department, how do I know what everybody else has worked on? If I'm working in the UK, how do I know what the team in New York did? 
And am I going to reinvent the wheel? Am I going to spend the next month of my life? Am I going to hire consultants or outside parties to go do what already exists? And with a modern knowledge management system, I may very quickly find that uh, via StarMind, the person in New York who conducted similar survey that I need to talk to. I may find through um, a vast sea of uh, Qualtrics data and respondent level marketing, there's already been the synthesization of this data that's available in Knowledge Hunt. I might find the past presentations um, and, and you know, decks and PDFs, and not just the deck or the PDF, but there's really great data on slide three, there's great data on slide 32, and great data on another deck in slide 12. That's what I need. I don't need to go hire for this. I don't need to spend the next month of my life doing this. I need to spend the next two days leveraging what we already have and taking it to the next level that's specific to me. And there's a huge amount of savings that come around that. And if we can come up with those stories, it becomes much easier to go to the boss and say, look, I think we can save you know, a quarter million a year, a half million a year, a million a year, whatever it is based on the size of your organization and the scale of it. Um, but for us, it starts with that persona model. <clears throat> so that's what uh, uh, Laura, Mark, and I were hoping to share with everybody today. Uh, hopefully that that is, um, has been uh, helpful for ideas, but we can also uh, um, open the floor to Q&A. Well, thank you all so much for, for a wonderful presentation. Um, it does look like we've got a few questions already, so let's go on and dive on in. Looks like we've got some uh, emojis coming through as well. Always love to see that. Um, so the first question looks like, I think you might have touched on this a little bit, Scott, but um, it's wanting to know, is Lucy using knowledge how to mine raw data? So if you guys could speak to that a little bit. Well, I think that uh, Laura probably wants to talk about how Knowledge Hound starts with the data. So Knowledge Hound starts with the data, and that's um, that's exactly yes. Knowledge Hound is enabling you to mine the raw data because within Lucy, you cannot get to those charts and graphs that he showed and those actual questions and answers, the ones and the zeros, if you will, of what your consumers are saying from that survey. And so when you've got knowledge hound as a component of your knowledge management ecosystem, you're powering your insights from that data. So it doesn't automatically do it in that it doesn't just come with, I might be, I might be anticipating a question here. It might not just come with it. It depends on the package that you buy from um, Lucy and or if you're a joint client of both of us. Yep. And our point of view is that um, is best of breed. Lucy is really great at natural language search. And she has great connections that automate data integration to data that's owned and licensed and through partners. But Knowledge Hound is amazing at that respondent level marketing data and the ability to dive into Qualtrics and create those, uh, the analysis and those visualizations. They're best of breed in that, just like Starmine is best of breed on how do we unlock the talents of the experts. And so a knowledge system needs to include these things ultimately. So how do you bring them together versus try to get, you know, well, you don't want to miss any of these things. So. Right. Exactly. Awesome. And then this one is uh, about whether Google Drive is considered one source, even though it could be thousands of files. Uh, so for us, we connect to Google Drive, Box, Dropbox, Ignite, Confluence, GitHub, Jira. Uh, and then about 75% of all first party connections are Microsoft technology. So Teams, Streams, uh, SharePoint, Office 365, Azure Cloud. So for us, they're just all connections and they're all connections that are to repositories of data that we then automatically ingest, um, read, listen, watch, learn, and tag. So Google Drive is just one of many that we connect to. Awesome. It looks like we just had one more comment. It says, what, are, what is the lower threshold for enterprise size where these excellent solutions start to make sense for ROI perspective? Does this make, make sense for smaller orgs? I can take that, but uh, yes, I can take that too. Um, I think 
It absolutely depends um, on the type of research you're doing. So if you are doing, you know, I use that Twitter example from a knowledge hound perspective, that was one foundational study that was critically important to them. And so you can leverage knowledge hound for that one foundational study. Now it becomes more powerful as you grow because just like anything else, the more data you have in it, the more you can warehouse it. But you can always, um, depending on size or depending on appetite for technology adoption, I think with any of us, you know, s s crawl, walk, run, if you will. Um, and I'm, you know, speaking from at least Knowledge Town, we have different price points depending on size, data consumption, and just, you know, where we're at now. And we want to be good partners, just like we do on a channel perspective in this call, but with our clients too, speaking to the needs case. And I know that I speak for Scott and Mark and probably saying the exact same thing from their perspective. But yeah, it's curious to get Mark's perspective. I and mean, I think we're both kind of enterprise vendors and where you know more people or more data uh, makes the argument a bit easier. But Mark, what are your thoughts? Yeah, for Starmind, we have a lower threshold of a, a thousand knowledge workers. It's just because if you know everyone, you don't need an AI to pinpoint you to the right person. So if you are all on the same floor, there are these studies that if you work on the same floor, chances that you collaborate are like 67% higher. And if not, and if you're in the same building, it's still 33%. But uh, I mean, the bigger the company, the, the, the bigger the value for the individual to be able to tap into the whole knowledge of the, uh, of, of the organization. So we have set our, our threshold at a thousand uh, people. Cool. Awesome. And then this one is a Lucy specific question. It says, can we ask Lucy where current politics are going, for example? <laughs> uh, <laughs> yes and no. So if, uh, if people have written uh, reports or created studies or plans or documents that are about that, then absolutely yes. Um, but she doesn't make it up out of the ether uh, and she doesn't search the public domain. I mean, we do have uh, um, supplemental searches into public content, um, but the, uh, um, you know, Lucy's as good as the data that's available to her and the data that's typically available is the data that a company owns or the data a company licenses. So if you've had people that are doing analysis of, of politics and latest events, and that's things that are written and that exist in you know, a system like a SharePoint, then absolutely Lucy's gonna provide um, great answers from that content, but she's not gonna, you know, she's not gonna read the New York Times and a hundred other publications and say, this is what's next in the world. <laughs> All right, thank you so much for touching on that, Scott. Um, could knowledge management uh, no a knowledge management platform be beneficial to other business groups besides the research and insights industry? Yeah, absolutely. Actually, I like. I mean, Mark, you guys cross all kinds of stuff, so maybe I'll let you lead, and I'll, I'll follow on that. Well, absolutely, yeah. So, I mean. Uh, the more important knowledge is for an industry, the easier it is to sell. That's <laughs> quite quite easy. But we see that every single industry turns into a more knowledge intense industry. Uh, so we have we have lots of customers in the financial services industry that is being disrupted by uh, modern technology, uh, and suddenly everyone understands that you actually have to bring people together to bring people together with different perspectives. And you can only uh, be innovative if you uh, if, if you don't stay in your micro silo. And these micro silos got smaller dur during uh, during the pandemic. So uh, we see a trend in almost every industry uh, for for uh, for knowledge management, and it's getting more important for a lot a lot of companies. Yeah, for Lucy, she grew up in research and insights. Uh, and there's no question because I think that the research and insights professionals kind of have led the way on this. Uh, and they're such an important part of supporting sales, supporting marketing, supporting executive leadership. But what we have found is that as people become more aware of Lucy, we start to find that she's brought into other use cases for companies. So uh, for example, uh, sales support and sales assist, you know, where research and insights professionals have a certain kind of content. Well, in sales, they need to, you know, look at past proposals, contracts, RFP responses, white papers, case studies. Um, we're helping 
IT. We've got one customer with 1,300 people in IT, and Lucy's connected to Jira, GitHub, Confluence, SharePoint, uh, where all the technical documentation, training videos, frequently asked questions. Uh, HR uh, onboarding is a big one as well. You know, a new employee comes into a company, can be in sales, it can be in HR, it can be in, you know, customer service, it can be in research and insights or marketing. They all have the same issue. I don't know any of the data that existed before I got here. And Lucy can be a first line subject matter expert for people to ask questions uh, and get important information back. So we are finding that we're being brought into more and more use cases, oftentimes with customers that started in research and insights, and then it brought us into other areas of the business as well. Perfect. And I don't know who wants to touch on this one, but the next question is about the impact of the pandemic and remote work on the need for all of your respective services, I suppose. I bet we've all got similar stories, but maybe Laura can uh, lead off on that one. Oh, Laura, I think you're muted. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Um, absolutely. So what didn't the pandemic impact, right? Um, I think in terms of and if anybody has an answer to that, that is really creative. I'd love to hear it. <laughs> but um, I think absolutely the discovery piece um, for all of us has become so critical because as Mark mentioned, um, Bob, that used to be down the hall is no longer down the hall. <laughs> yeah. And so trying to find the person that you might, you know, find the, the nugget. I like to use the term nugget because sometimes, you know, I always feel that one or two nuggets can change the course of anything. So sometimes finding those um, pertinent details that you might get out of natural conversations that you'd have with coworkers is completely impossible to do because of the way that we are working today. And I think it's interesting that we've got we've we also have so many silos that take place. So we work with a client where we're we're in seven different business units, and quite frankly, they don't talk well to each other. It's not malintended or because they don't want to. It's because they're living their world and driving their brands. And so the pandemic has accentuated that, and that's why technology, I think, has become not just our technology and Martech, but just in general, has become more look at Zoom, for instance, has become more profound and more pertinent than ever before. Yeah, I think that it's been, um, you know, I, I hate the pandemic, but I think it's been an accelerant for knowledge management. Um, mm -hmm. I need to find the right people. I need to right, find the right data. I need to find the right files. And I'm doing it from my home. And there is nobody to walk down the hall and see. And even as businesses go hybrid, you still have all of the geography and you still have that there's inconsistency to who's in the office. And so, yeah, I think it's been a huge boon uh, to all of us. Awesome. All right. And then I've got one more question on my end. Um, what are you seeing employees or companies being able to achieve with the extra time that they're saving? My perspective is that everybody has too little time to get everything done. And the benefit is spending time on high value functions because they're just, there's, there's no benefit to the, um, you know, I looked at 20 SharePoints today and I looked at, you know, 500 files by hitting open and command F and looking for a keyword. That process isn't really very beneficial. Um, so I think, I mean, I shouldn't say I think, we know because we survey it, we save tons of time for people and we allow them to either get done what they need to get done or at least reallocate it to higher level functions than things that are just the lowest value work they can do. And I'll add to that. So, you know, all of us to an extent, depending on what, what data points we're talking about, we're democratizing data, which is also empowering people. Um, so you get inherent benefits of job satisfaction, of better synergy, um, of better culture from that regard. But if you go to the actual ROI, I'm gonna go back to that Danone example that I used that they would not have found the piece of information they needed to positively affect a billion dollar brand without having, in this case, knowledge hunt, but it, you know, that, that we all have examples of that with our, when our client bases and that's driving ROI, you know, taking something from eight hours to three minutes. Think about the amount of time that you can then spend on the real impactful elements of what you're trying to do with your job. I mean, I think that's where, you truly drive home why you need these types of solutions in order to make money. Or in some cases, you might find an answer that lets you stop something you're working on and it actually saves you 
a lot of money that you would have otherwise wasted on a failed product in a market or a failed target segment that you would, in, you know, inadvertently gone after and new data tells you you need to pivot your strategy. And so the cost of that savings can sometimes be the reason enough. So it's both the make money and the save money. There is there's one other uh, perspective to that. I mean, one thing is what do people do when they save time? Are they just using it for for uh, for for uh, their well being, uh, or are they using it for more value generating uh, tasks? But on the other hand, if you look at it from the perspective, do you really want uh, well paid people to spend hours searching for things? being frustrated uh and, and with the, the the big term of like the great resignation people are just leaving companies because uh, they are just not happy anymore everything you can do to make a job more attractive uh, is an important factor not just what you do on top with the time you get awesome great point and this is a question for kind of all three of you i think so this says uh, can you see your technologies working outside of an individual company, like an auto car, car dealership or something like that? Uh, we have some customers that connect to their partners, their affiliates, their broader networks. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they'll start with um, Lucy is a knowledge management within, you know, particular roles or functions in the company. But then uh, as long as the data that's available can be shared to the partners, to the outside parties, um, extending Lucy um, outside the walls that way. I would echo that. Absolutely. I think it depends on the data you're trying to discover, socialize, democratize, and what insights you're trying to draw from it. And putting the, it, it's all about putting the right data in the right people's hands at the right time and then allowing them to actually action that data and find the insights they're looking for, regardless of what it is. And so, depending on the use case, the answer would typically be yes. Same Perfect. for us. So sorry. Uh, so, no, 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 sorry. Uh, I wasn't have, sure we could talk. <laughs> Go for it. We 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 have, for example, a, a chain of uh, lots of pharmacies in in Germany using Starman as second level support. And there is uh, someone entering the pharmacy having a question they cannot answer themselves. Uh, they are connected to all the other pharmacists uh, around Germany to get uh, someone who actually has an answer to that problem. So we do have use cases where, where Starman is used outside of, uh, of, of, of an entity, but uh, the majority of our use cases are, in, are, are internal ones. Perfect. Thank you, all three of you. Um, and I know we've talked a little bit um, on ROI, but I want to circle back to that a little bit more. Um, do you assist in helping organizations to calculate and share value specific to their company, you know, contingent upon the ROI and the company or the stats for that particular company? Yeah, we love to do that. So that's, you know, when I mentioned in my section about doing the persona modeling, that's actually part of our process is to meet with the customer, mm -hmm. go through the persona model, and to uh, ultimately try to tie that back to, you know, goals, objectives, and how they would value those so that they can help determine or we can help work with them to determine the ROI. And, and, and yes, at Knowledge Hound, um, we, we've got different ways in which we do this. And part of it is actually quantifying the dollars of data that you have in there because, you know, it's lost sometimes how expensive these consumer surveys are that you're doing. And so when we can showcase the dollars of research that people are accessing over time and repurposing, there's an immediate ROI. And, and we'll tweak that and work with individual clients to show where and how they're driving that ROI. Awesome. And we are coming close on time. So if anybody has any additional questions, make sure to pop those in the chat right now. Um, but this has been a fantastic conversation, fantastic presentation from all three of you. So really appreciate everything. Um, if anybody thinks of any questions after the fact, make sure to reach out and Lucy or Knowledge Hound or Starmine, maybe all three will reach out to you and uh, get back to your questions. Um, but thank you so much, everybody, for being here today. Um, Really appreciate it. Excellent. Thank you, Natalie. Thank Thanks, you, everybody. Natalie. Thanks, everybody. Thank All you. Right.